Hello, and welcome once again to Devardi Glass Videos. Today we'll be discussing several of our products, including the new Spartan Surface Mix Torch. The new advanced design in the Surface Mix Torch gives you a wider range of flexibility when using either soft glass or boro. Now before getting into that let's just discuss a few little safety devices here before connecting our torch. You can see the two check valves for both the oxygen and the propane that attach directly to the torch. Next you attach the two hoses and then on the other end of the hoses where the regulators are these two flashback arresters are paramount. These safety devices are discussed more thoroughly on our website. Now several other items we'll be discussing today. This uh, heat sink marvin pad, this um, mini annealer, the rod warmer with the heating plate on top for Marini, and several other products by Devardi Glass, including this graphite disc shaper. Now let's get started by demonstrating the Spartan Surface Mix Torch by Devardi Glass. We'll start by showing you just how small a flame that this torch will actually operate. And a nice pointed tip when you turn it up a little bit for some real detailed work. Now the biggest problem with most surface mix torches is that they've been designed to not only work with soft glass but also with boro which actually defeats the purpose for the surface mix. The whole purpose for having a surface mix is to have a cooler flame so the flame doesn't burn soft glass. But it certainly is nice to also have a torch that will work with boro. The Spartan torch solves this problem. As you can see, the outer ring of the jets on the Spartan torch force the flame slightly outward away from the center. This space between each of the jets allows air from the room to enter the flame allowing for a much cleaner burn but also cools the flame to give you a cooler overall temperature. The jets on most surface mix torches actually converge the flame when it exits the torch. This new design where the jets actually spread the flame apart when it exits the torch gives you a much cooler flame. However, once you turn this flame up higher for using boro glass, you will see these air pockets in between the jets fill full of flame and actually increase the temp temperature considerably. This will provide you enough heat to easily melt boro glass. Now these are uh, the three beads that we'll be working on today. They're all soft glass and we'll also be making a boro bead today. It's not uh, shown in the picture yet. Now we are using our Bake On Finish bead release and uh, a lot of you have tried it and used it and love it and we love it. Basically you need to uh, allow this bead release to dry on the mandrel and then just before use you bake that bead release onto the mandrel by turning the uh, mandrel over and over again in the flame until it turns red and then just keep that bead release on the mandrel hot and boy this release really holds the glass. Now if you allow it to cool by pulling the mandrel out of the flame it will begin to crumble. 
This, of course, uh, helps you remove the bead later once the bead has cooled. So just be sure not to pull your mandrel away from the flame too much and allowing that bead release to cool until you're done with your bead. Now we have the torch set to about a medium or neutral flame and we are using the uh, D7 Dark Rose by Devarty Glass. This one has a lipstick core. It's a bicolor rod. Nice stuff. And uh, we're going to be demonstrating some of our pixie dust on this glass and also using the new heatsink Marvin pad that we just got in. I'm telling you this is really a nice shaper. Rather inexpensive too. So if you like that shaper look for that on our website. We will also be inserting our beads into our mini annealer that we have created ourselves and uh, have been selling for a few years now. This product works excellent for small scale annealing. There's been a few skeptics out there concerning our mini annealer. Those who support the use of uh, the regular bead kiln. But I assure you we don't sell products that don't work. We have tested and tested this annealer. We've sold well over a thousand units now and we have tons of customers that absolutely love this mini annealer. We do recommend still that uh, people eventually get a kiln because for larger scale it certainly is much more practical. But for small scale, for beginners, for traveling, this mini annealer that we use is absolutely fabulous. We'll be showing you that in a second. Right now we have encased our uh, D7 bicolor rose glass with uh, golden sparkle pixie dust. And we're just melting it into the surface. Pressing it against the marver to make sure it's melted into the glass. I like using the gold sparkle because it really holds its gold color. Some of the pixie dusts tend to lose color when you heat them. But uh, the gold sparkle remains nice and gold and sparkly. Now we're going to shape this on our new heat sink bead shaper. And uh, this is a lot of fun. I like this shaper. It makes some really neat lines in your beads. You may or may not like them, but uh, I find them to be very attractive. And, and this marble is very easy to use once you get the hang of it. Might take a couple times, but look at that. Isn't that isn't that just the prettiest thing you've ever seen? And the gold sparkle, just beautiful. Now that bead is done. We're going to put that directly into our mini annealer, and uh, you'll be able to see there's a dull red glow inside the mini annealer. This means this has reached the proper annealing temperatures. So we're just going to leave that in there and uh, start working on our next bead. Now this is the Devarty Glass Lime Green with a white core bicolor rod. Really nice colors, these bicolor rods. Sort of do half of the design work for you. We still are on a neutral flame with the torch. Notice you don't see a smidgen of burning on this glass. 
It works so nicely. It, uh, it's almost impossible to burn your glass. What we'll be demonstrating this time with this particular bead is the disc shaper graphite marber. Just want to show you how easy it is to make a disc shaped bead. I'm not that great at it. Natasha is actually much better than I am, but uh, with a few pushes, well, we can make some pretty nice beads and quickly. And they're near perfect disc shape, which is uh, well, it's handy for people like me. I just can't make disc shaped beads. We also have several other shapes on our website, including the, uh, the round bead shaper. And boy, that one is handy because I cannot make a round bead to save my life either. I don't know how Natasha does it, but hers always come out perfect without a shaper. Mine are always lopsided. But with these shapers, it sure solves that problem. Now you may also have noticed that I've been taking these glass rods directly out of the rod warmer and putting them right into the flame without any further warm up. And that's the beauty of that rod warmer. Boy, it saves some time. I set them down usually on the desk for just a, a few seconds, let it cool down before you stick that glass rod back in the rod warmer, just to make sure it's not going to stick to any other glass rods that are in there. Now we're going to just shape this bead on the disc shaper, just a small one. And uh, for me it takes a few times to get it just right. I know probably some of you out there can do it in one shot, but uh, just a few times and it pretty well gets it. You can see it's starting to take a nice disc shape. And then you just smooth the uh, edges a little bit with the torch. And then maybe press again if you need to. Like I do. You can see how beautiful that glass is too. That bicolor glass is just one of my favorites. Now that uh, piano playing in the background, of course, is my dad, which some of you may know if you've seen some of our other videos. Thanks a lot, Dad, for the background music. Love you. Now we're going to just smooth that up a little bit and uh, put it into our mini annealer and start on our next bead. You just got to be careful here not to uh, touch the bead next to it. Now you get used to it after a while. And there you go. Now we're going to be starting on uh, the Indian marbled glass. This is the snail shell. And uh, it'll give you a some really nice designs in the glass from caramel to creamy white and everything in between as you'll be seeing. This was actually an accidental glass by the factory. They were trying to produce something else for someone and uh, ended up 
with this color and we're glad they did so I bought everything they had because it's absolutely beautiful now we're just uh, starting our little end starter beads there as you uh, know I do if you've seen our other videos this gives you a nice little beginning and end point to your beads without having to worry about shaping them up later then we're just gonna fill in between you can see the various colors that this glass leaves in your bead so nice looks uh, like a snail shell actually hence the name snail shell now we're just gonna add a little bit more glass done smoothing up the edges a little bit there and as we add this glass you'll see the lines and swirls and everything else coming into the glass some are transparent some are semi-transparent some are opaque and what we're going to do with this bead is shape it again on the heat sink marber the reason I want to show you one more here is because this is going to be a tapered shape where one end of the bead is much thicker than the other end. Gives you an interesting shape on that marber because each groove will separate the glass from smaller to larger. Looks like a stack of beads almost. The one thing I really want to stress here, and uh, like you all to take notice, is that there are no burn spots in this glass. We are so thrilled about that, because uh, sometimes that can be rather difficult to control. Now you can see the neat little design, which each bead shape is larger than the next one. And we're going to set that in between these two beads. I separated them a little bit while you guys weren't looking. Give us a little more room. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start on a boro rod. You'll know this is boro because it's room temperature and we're going to stick it right in the flame here. And uh, if it wasn't boro, it would be blowing up at this point. So we're going to turn that flame up, and you'll be able to see that boro melt like butter. This is so great. You can see the uh, in between the jets, like I showed you before, have completely filled with flame. There is no air pockets in between, and that flame is hot. Now this bead release, if baked on, will handle boro just fine. But you have to bake it on your mandrel, or it will not be strong enough to hold your glass. Just put it in the flame before you use it, and roll it until it turns hot all the way around. It should be red up against the flame, and that bakes into almost a ceramic type finish becomes very strong as long as you keep it hot. Now you can see this boro just going right on like butter. No problem whatsoever with the Spartan torch.
Now, don't forget when you do use boroglass, you also use a green either IR lens for, for your eye protection or add a, a green clip on to your didymium. Boro produces a much brighter flame and uh, you need that IR protection or green and didymium to protect yourself. There you have it, a nice quick boro bead, easily melted and easily shaped. Here's a picture of the boro bead, nice and cool now so you can see it. These are the three soft glass beads we made and uh, I'm going to show you a close-up of them here in just a second. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I really appreciate it. appreciate every one of you. Email us if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye now.